Hi, let's understand the PDCCH and the DCI formats in a little bit more detail. And we'll talk about the different identities that have been allocated to the UE during these transactions. So we are considering a simple call flow of initial access procedure where we have the PSS, SSS and the PBCH which is being transmitted by the radio access network or the E-Node-B to the user equipment. This is for the initial synchronization. And then after there is some cell selection, reselection thresholds and the PLM and identity which is being transmitted by the, by the SIP messages in the PDSCH. But in between that, what normally happens is there is a DCI format which comes into the picture which is being passed on within the control channels which is PDCCH. And this format would be different depending upon the messages that is going to be interacted between these two entities. Now here in this case, what exactly the format we are getting is 1A. And if we refer to the previous slide, we can see that it is related to the system information which is being passed on from the base station to the UE. Now every such DCI when passed on, there is a, some temporary ID which is associated with the UE at that particular time. It helps to troubleshoot some issue when happens in the network. We can easily identify that at which particular stage the UE has had an issue. Now, UE would have to tune to the PDCCH to look for the particular DCI accordingly. In this, in this case, it is a SIP messages which is coming in the downlink. Similarly, there are certain other messages. We are taking a few more examples. So we are having the in the uplink synchronization, there is a RATCH preamble and there is a response going back from the base station to the UE. But in between that also, there is some PDCCH DCI format which is transacting from the base station to the UE. And again, there is a temporary ID associated related to the random access in this particular case. Now the format is changed. It is 1C. Again, if we refer to the previous slide, we can see that this particular format is associated with certain kind of messages to be interacted between these two entities. Now, these are certain examples to just understand that how DCI format works and what is their significance. Next to that is a RRC setup request. Normally it is an attached request and there is a RRC setup coming from the base station. And in between that, Again, there is a DCI format one which is being used. And in this case, there is some temporary ID again allocated to the UE by the E-Node B. Next to that is a setup complete, RRC setup complete. And there would be a connection with the core network after that. But we will stay here between the radio access network and the, e and the user equipment. And what we can see at this stage, there is again another kind of DCI format, format zero, which is being transferred from the base station to the UE. So once the UE requests uplink resources to have this RRC connection complete message, there would be resources which will be assigned by the UE through this PDCCH. PD 